This is Brian Castor from Western Oregon University. Thank you for allowing me to share some thoughts on the interplay between science, technology, and human movement throughout the ages. From our beginnings onward, we had our eyes, our observational memory, and our creative desire to capture human and animal motion that was important to the society of the day, often with astounding accuracy. Such early contributions are chronicled well in the 1969 work by Gustav Eckstein, still in print today. Eckstein describes Homer's 8th century BC depiction of human movement as poetic grace contrasted with rough force. Yet at that time, he notes, the reasons behind the body's intricacies had not yet begun to excite humans' analyzing imagination. Though it did not take long for such analytic thinkers to emerge, this was a time when the scientist was also a philosopher, a physician, a psychologist. Investigative inquiry added new dimensions to our visual observation. Progress was at times slow, yet new waves of innovation came as Renaissance thinkers and doers began to add to the understanding of human motion. As a sketch artist, painter, inventor, a physicist, anatomist, physiologist, as a biomechanical engineer, Leonardo can still instruct us on how to work within and across traditional disciplinary boundaries. From Renaissance through Enlightenment, there are many who exemplify the value of a multidisciplinary approach. Descartes the mathematician, the neurophysiologist, the philosopher is but one. We think that technology or theory is developed often first, then applied to human motion. But examples abound that support the converse, where our very interest in understanding human motion is the driving force behind a technological or theoretical leap. Borelli, for example, arrived independently at many of the same governing principles as Newton, but from a desire to understand human function, channeling Leonardo in many ways. A major leap in photography is depicted here, as Moybridge invents in order to answer a pressing sports question of that time and place. Specifically, did the trotting horse ever fully go airborne? Looking back, one might conclude that the cave painters actually answered that question pretty good, with observation alone. Our capability to now track motion across space allows for a record that can challenge our visual recollection from memory. Pioneered by those such as Moybridge and Murray, images captured in precisely timed sequence leads to cinematography and to all the aesthetic, scientific, and entertainment applications that persist to this day. But might this also represent a departure from refining and trusting our inherent human senses? And might there be a cost to this departure? Imagery formerly captured in human memory and disseminated through words and artistic depiction can now be converted to numbers. With high-speed film, we can now, for the first time, see what the human eye cannot see. In innovation, in visual augmentation continues. Where the artist formerly hand-rendered the film-captured image, that mental capacity and eye-to-hand eye skill is no longer needed, having been replaced by code. Photography, in all its forms, dominates the scene for over a century. Then, advancing computing speed and miniaturization of computing circuitry lead to a new technological leap. With sensors on pads, helmets, sideline markers, even officials, and a technical support staff that numbers in the hundreds. But who decides what the athlete, coach, or fan gets to see? Who interprets the importance of what it means? Real statistical analysis to infer cause and effect? Likely not, just data and information, and lots of it. Will the perceived need for access to technology at all levels of sport limit who gets to participate, or even who can afford to watch? The need for the multidisciplinary thinker now exists more than ever to guide thoughtful use of these tools, so that we not blindly accept that more data leads to better understanding, so that we may also use and value our inherent human skills to observe and infer from the imagery traces that reside in our minds. I'll leave you with an additional comment by Eckstein on Leonardo, which I find particularly instructive. That he started so much, but left so much unfinished, Leonardo has been blamed. However, had he finished what he started, the loss would have been ours, because we would have been trading for completed works that consumed his strength, the wonder of beholding the human body in the many guises he beheld it in. He had time and mind for play. <laughs>